welcome back. This is S.J. Pedersen with another tutorial about the Afrobeat legend Fela Kuti. This one is about one of his best pieces called Sorrow, Tears and Blood. And because the YouTube police have been cracking down on me using his original music to demonstrate it, I am sticking only to my transcription. So what you are listening to is my transcription in Sibelius 7 and I'm gonna go over the various parts of this amazing piece which I'm sure you know otherwise you wouldn't be watching this tutorial right now we have a whole bunch of stuff going on in this one and the strangest thing is that the first guitar the tenor guitar plays in swing feel, swing 16s, which sounds like this. If I would play this straight, it would sound, let me see if this works. I'll change this to straight deal with a little bit of a misspelling there let's see what it sounds like ah uh, that didn't work I have to go into my uh, play performance and as you can see here it's set to swing 16s if I put it straight it sounds like this completely different now the strangest thing about this is that the rest of the song I'm gonna go in and make sure my performance is now set for 16 swing is that none of the other instruments play in swing and honestly this is the only piece I've ever heard where you have one instrument play swing 16s and the rest play completely straight. If I would leave the swing 16s on for the rest of the song, it wouldn't impact anything until I get to here where there are 16s in the drums. I have here changed it to straight time. So when you hear the music, this part here, if I would play it here, would sound not like the original and would sound really kind of strange. So what I've done is uh, I pre-rendered a version of this uh, where I rendered only the Swing 16 guitars and the rest of the music without the first guitar and then composited it in Nuendo. So what you've been listening to is the Nuendo version of it. As usual, I'm going to start with the rhythm section. Uh, the format of the song, Fela often brings in... Uh, the instrument sort of one by one. I'm gonna go and do this, uh, which he does here with the first guitar uh, for once, a third guitar that kind of goes out eventually. Uh, when the groove comes in, I transcribe a little bit of the piano part, and a very uncommon thing is that he actually plays the melody. On the piano or at least quotes it before he starts to improvise usually that's not how his songs work uh, they go straight into solos and there's all kinds of great horn parts so let's go to the I'm gonna close this one let's go to my rhythm chart here no another thing usually I start with the bass and drums and I'm gonna do that here as well I have mentioned before, if you've seen any of my other tutorials, that it's sort of a trademark of his not to play the bass at the same beats as the kick drum. And the kick drum in this place, or in this piece, starts with two 16s. The bass doesn't come in until on the second 16 of the first beat, which leaves this bass note 
very, very open. And it sounds extremely cool. When I've taught the song out to students, they have such a hard time playing this on the offbeat. Uh, but it's really one of the greatest aspects of this piece. Here's the drums by themselves. Obviously he plays a whole lot more. Tony Allen being the master, the guru, the inventor. Uh, there's no snare in here really. Uh, now if I play the bass part, and I just simplify the drum line, that's basically it. Usually keeps the kick drum pretty solid throughout. Here's the bass part. Now, if you listen to that without a reference of a solid metronome beat, you might not notice the extreme syncopation of having it come in on the second 16 of the first beat. So if you play that together with the drums, you should be able to hear it. clearly hear this kick drum just stands out and the bass note comes in on the second kick drum and it creates this beautiful beautiful like jerky syncopated amazing feel i have the bass line written in tablature here i'm sure you bass players can read that uh, as usual there's some maracas and also i got a lot of traffic today don't pay much attention to my dynamic markings the only way i can get the maracas loud enough is to put it in Forte fortissimo. But if we play the bass, maracas, and drums together, we should have the following sound. And it becomes even more obvious how the bass is syncopated. Uh, I'm going to go to the guitars. Now, I have it written a straight time here, otherwise, this wouldn't work. But I, like I said, I have pre-rendered the parts. And the second guitar plays a syncopated figure based on a C minor bar chord, third position to a C minor six. Sounds sort of like this. As usual, the MIDI versions of the guitar samples are a little weak. Uh, that comes in on the and of one. So we have a bass drum on one, bass on the, end, the second 16 on one, the rhythm guitar on the and of one. So they all are staggered. It's beautiful. Uh, this part here, uh, I'm going to, it says straight time here, but I'm going to punch in. Uh, when I play this back, I'm going to substitute it to something I already pre-rendered just for the sake of visuals. You can see here what this sounds like or what it looks like. That's a very cool guitar line. In tablature as well, it's one bar long. The rhythm guitar, the guitar two, is one bar long. The bass is one bar long. As a matter of fact, everything except for eventually the horn. For 10, 15 minutes, they play the same thing almost. And this song actually has a bridge, so it's got a different thing. I have a keyboard part in here as well, uh, C minor 7. With a C minor and an F chord leading up to it. If I play this whole rhythm section together, all I got to do is click on one note. And uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to play from the very beginning. I'm going to let this run. And what you will be hearing is when this guitar comes in, it will be in swing feel because of the pre-work that I've done. Here we go.
an amazing, devastating groove when the whole when the electric piano comes in and then the whole bass, the whole groove, it's just fantastic. So that's sort of the explanation for the rhythm section, which I always prefer to do because in a way, it's probably not what you think of most with this music because the lyrics are so powerful and the horn parts are so great that the rhythm section sometimes maybe get overlooked, but that is really the core of Afrobeat. Uh, I'm gonna continue with a second tutorial on this piece that deals with uh, the rest of the song, including the horn parts and the bridge and so forth. So I will be back for that. Thanks for tuning in.